The Zerbi star at Brighton has been nothing short of spectacular, continuing the Seagulls' transformation into one of the most aggressive and entertaining teams in the league, all with a simple principle at its core – possession football all over the pitch. It's a principle that the Zerbi has maintained throughout his entire coaching career, and his style is instantly recognisable, whether it's Sosualo, Shakhtar or Brighton. The stats behind the Zerbi's revolution are seriously impressive, and Brighton rank amongst the best in the league for goal conversion rate and chances created, which in turn has led to a remarkable run of goals. But this form in front of goal is due to a very solid base and a wonderful passing style. So let's start by taking a look at the foundation of every attack, the build-up. Brighton's most common formation and a staple of the Zerbi's philosophy is a 4-2-3-1. However, the starting lineup is irrelevant once the game starts. The tactical trends of the past decade have meant the majority of teams will look to build from the back. But while most teams will look to do this with as few players as possible, the Italian coach adopts a different mentality, and will look to keep his four defenders, two holding mids and the goalkeeper involved in build-up. In contrast, Pep Guardiola will usually maintain a 3-2 or a 2-3 structure to build from, preferring an extra player further up the pitch. While it may seem counterintuitive to have 7 players in your own defensive third as it makes it difficult to directly outnumber the opposition's defence, the consequences of this are substantial. Firstly, it gives the team a lot of passing options, and gives every player at least 2 possibilities for moving the ball. Brighton will often complete sequences of 10-15 to 15 passes in this area, comfortably dealing with pressure from the opposition and disrupting their shape. The two centre-backs complete a lot of passes per game, with Lewis Dunk averaging 85 passes per match, the second highest in the league, while also maintaining a passing accuracy of 90.6. Secondly, having this many players active during build-up often forces the opposition to commit a lot of players to the high press, trying to block certain passing routes and man-marking the options in the centre. But this high press just falls into Brighton's favour, and their main objective is to free up space between the lines and isolate the attacking set of players with the defenders. We'll examine the role of the attacking set of players more clearly in the next part of the video, but their shape and positioning is vital for their build-up to work, blocking the back four in place and occupying a space between the lines. As a whole, the team will resemble a 2-4-2-2, and this double box shape in the centre is the key. It makes it very difficult for the opposition to cover all the players, and even if they man-marked, Brighton always have the goalkeeper to rely on to create a numerical advantage. This box shape in midfield is a very common pattern in modern football, however it's usually seen further up the pitch, in an attempt to free up a player between defence and midfield. Having this second deeper box is proving to be extremely beneficial for De Zerbi's Brighton, who can consistently outnumber the opposition's press. Each pass during build-up is part of a greater sequence, and is always an indirect move to free up a player in more space. For example, let's say Dunk is on the ball. Based on which player comes to press him, he will make a decision on where to move it. In a recent match against West Ham, it was often the central attacking midfielder Paqueta that would step out, meaning Caicedo would be free of his man. Instead of going directly to Caicedo as he would be in a difficult position with his back to goal, Brighton would move the ball to him indirectly, either through the two players between the lines dropping deep and laying the ball off, or even with longer passing sequences. This move against West Ham summarises their mentality perfectly. West Ham are sitting in a 4-1-4-1, with each player in the centre being covered. A pass directly into Caicedo would accomplish nothing, so Brighton wait for the gap. Eventually, Paqueta steps out onto the centre-back, and Caicedo is now free. Brighton know this, and a quick ball forward into Ferguson who lays it off into Caicedo, and now West Ham are in danger. This is the reason why every Brighton attack feels like a counter-attack as with two simple passes they've effectively cut out 6 players, and can now attack freely thanks to this space they've created. In fact, third man passes are essential for how De Zerbi plays, and nearly every first pass from the front four is a layoff into a player who has space to play the ball forward. Going back to the first clip from the start of the video, we can see this first build up pattern perfectly, the initial 2-4 structure. Paqueta presses the centre back, freeing up Caicedo, who is now the key player to help Brighton get out of this situation. An excellent passing sequence finds him in space, and now Brighton can start their attack. This build-up style is also highlighted in the statistics, with the centre-back Dunk and holding midfielder Gross being in the top 18 players in the Premier League for expected threat from passes, showing how they can comfortably help the team gain ground with their passing range. 
If you want to know more about the stats in this video, then make sure to check out our brilliant sponsors at Soccerman. I use their platform daily to help me improve my understanding of the game. The link is in the description down below. So with the build up out the way, let's start with the next vital part of the Zerbi's style of play, the role of the attackers. We saw during build up how the attacker's shape will often resemble a 2-2. The middle two are usually formed by McAllister and Ferguson or Welbeck, while March and Matoma will start in a wider position. This slightly staggered shape is already a tricky one to stop, as the two central players in the space between the lines will be closed down by the centre-backs, leaving space for the wingers to cut inside and attack more centrally. Subsequently, if the defence sits back to cover this central space, then Brighton can simply turn and run at the back line. But this positioning of the front four is not static, and will often rotate and create overloads in certain areas. It makes it easier to understand if we imagine two spaces, each of which needs to be occupied by at least two players. The first space is the space between the lines, while the second space is in line with the defence, with a threat of a ball in behind the back line. Usually it's the two central players in this area and the wingers in the more advanced positioning, but in certain situations, Ferguson or McAllister could push up, blocking the fullback and freeing this space that is taken by the winger coming short. It's an excellent way of bypassing central blocks, which Brighton often end up facing, and these constant movements free up space either out wide behind the fullbacks or behind the centre backs. Their goal against Leeds is an excellent example of how they can use this 2-2 structure to their advantage, as the striker and winger drag the defenders out of position, freeing up space for Gross to attack in behind. Similarly, their goal against Crystal Palace is also an excellent example of how they use the striker's movement to their advantage, with Matoma dropping deep between the lines to receive the pass. McAllister overlaps and drags away a defender to free up central space with March drifting inside and attacking the space vacated by the striker. Matoma is arguably Brighton's most dangerous player when there is space to run into, with an expected threat of 3.2, the sixth highest in the Premier League, showing how he helps the team gain ground with his dribbling and passing ability. As the team moves up the pitch, depending on which flank the team builds down, there are also some clever rotations to create overloads and outnumber the defence. Firstly, let's say there is space to exploit on the right flank. The striker will come short, with March drifting inside and taking his position, freeing up space for the fullback to push up on the right. With the ball moving over to this position, it's also a trigger for one of the holding mids, in this case Gross, to push up on the back line, forming a front four and blocking the defenders in place. While this initially seems as if it breaks the box in the centre, the shape is recomposed with the opposite fullback drifting inside, alongside the other central defensive midfielder. This means the team has support to rotate the ball, while also having players in all of the key positions. In De Zerbi's Brighton, the structure is the most important thing, and not necessarily who occupies each position. And so as long as these key positions are occupied, the team is still able to create a lot of dangerous opportunities. In the final third, the shape will often resemble a 2-2-2-4 or even a 2-3-5, with constant overlaps and attacks in the half spaces. Once the team attempts a cross into the box, then there are a number of different players ready to finish off the move. So going back to our original clip, Brighton break the press and move into this second phase. In this case, given the wide area being occupied by March, the fullback underlaps into the half space, creating a front four, isolating each defender in an individual duel. An excellent switch and Matoma is able to cut inside and win his team a penalty. But none of this would have been possible if it wasn't for the coordinated runs and movements of the rest of the team. If Gross doesn't overlap, the back four wouldn't need to shift further to the left, and a switch in play would have been harder given the fullback being closer to Matoma, and potentially easier to intercept the switch in play. The Zerbi has taken the Premier League by storm, receiving a lot of praise and criticism for his style of play. But the results speak for themselves, and Brighton are well in for a shout of European football next season. While Brighton were already in excellent form under Graham Potter, De Zerbi has been able to get the most out of every player, and hasn't struggled even after losing key players such as Cucurella and Trossard. And his philosophy is proving to be one of the most innovative in the league. And now let me know what you think. What do you make of De Zerbi's Brighton, and where do you think they're going to finish this season? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. In this video, we mention a lot of advanced metrics such as expected threat. If you want more information on these advanced metrics, then make sure to check out this video where we break down some of the most innovative stats in football. 
As always, if you enjoyed this content, then please leave a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.